In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Empty words. You know what empty words sound like. Words that have been robbed of all their meaning, or or words that are so vague that they can mean almost anything. You know, a a, a party platform that says, we're going to make everything right. Those words are meaningless because they could mean completely opposite things to two different people. Empty words. Empty words are, are, are sometimes spoken in, with the intent to do good, spoken as words of promise, but without the, the power to back up that promise. Empty words are sometimes just outright lies as well. You hear empty words spoken by public figures sometimes when they Sometimes when public apologies are made, someone will apologize. They will say, I'm so sorry. But what they're sorry for is that you weren't strong enough not to be offended by whatever it is that they said or they did. Those are empty words, words of apology. Words that are made as promises on the campaign trail with with no intent to ever keep those promises. Those are empty words. But sometimes... Sometimes empty words are also spoken by people that are close to us, people that love us, intend good things for us. Like a, like a parent speaking to a child when, when the situation or the thing is broken, saying, it's going to be okay. Well, maybe this, this thing in this situation clearly is not ever going to be okay. We'll get past this, but, but this is never going to be okay. Those words, as well-intended as they may be, Those are empty words. Sometimes we are guilty of of speaking empty words. Have you ever made the promise and even stated it out loud, I am going to quit tomorrow. (laughs) And you know in your heart, not even in your heart of hearts, but even in just the exterior part, you know very well that you've got no strong intention to ever make that happen. But you just like saying it. Empty words. Have you ever, when, when something goes wrong and there's someone to be blamed and you, you exonerate yourself, you declare yourself to be innocent, I had nothing to do with it, it is their fault, and you point to someone else as though they are guilty when all the while inside you know very well your conscience is screaming at you. You're the reason for this. Those are are empty words that you've spoken. But do you know who never speaks empty words? Has never spoken an empty word. That is the Lord, the God of faithfulness. The one who throughout the scriptures is shown to be the God of promise and delivery on that promise every time. You know, when Moses wrote about about God in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers, he says, God is not like a a human being, a man, that that he sometimes lies. God God never does this thing that, that he should change his mind and go exactly opposite of what he has said. Moses says, does he speak and then not act? Does he promise something and then not fulfill that? And the the answer that, the unstated answer to that is, obviously not. Our God is faithful all the time in his word. When his word goes out of his mouth, it is like the rain that he commands to fall from heaven. It goes where he sends it to go. It works by his power, always, every time, without fail. It achieves his purpose. His word never fails. It never loses its meaning. It never changes. And his word always delivers what it promises. Beautiful words from King David in the Psalms that say, The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. The word of the Lord remains into eternity. So understand, he speaks no empty words. And you ignore those words at your peril. 
That's a warning. But it's also a promise for you to believe. And a promise by which you receive such amazing blessings. See, we're sometimes, we're, we're tempted to treat God's words like the sometimes empty words of human beings. Something that we can listen to or ignore. Something that we can take to heart and learn from. A good piece of advice. The apple a day keeps the doctor away. We treat God's words like they're simply some other little piece of advice that we can adhere to and benefit from or forget about and ignore and be just fine without. But there's really no other way of saying this. Understand, you ignore the words of God at your peril. I'll say it again. You ignore the word of God at your own peril. His words are not empty. They are not meaningless. They are not empty, silly threats or simple advice that you can choose to to follow or to ignore and you will be just fine. We are told in God's word, in plain, powerful words, sinner, seek him while he may be found. While he is near, call on him for mercy. That that simply means that repent of your sin while your heart's still beating and while you still have breath in your lungs. These are no empty words. They are real and powerful and they carry a threat. Repent. Turn away from your sin because the kingdom of heaven is near. And you cannot abide the kingdom coming on the last day or your own last day while this sin is still clinging to you and you still live in it. So whatever it is that you've, you've been trying to keep, keep hidden from everybody else, that you, you think has been done in the dark and, and stays there, nobody else, even God, will ever know of, drag that sin out into the light of your God and confess it before it's too late. The sinful attitudes that, that occupy your heart, the, the arrogance and against other people, the anger that you carry with you, the grudges that that you have but you deny having against someone else, the priorities that are so screwed up that that see so much time for everything else but but very little time for love for someone else or, or desire to hear God's word. Take ownership of these things. Quit denying that they exist and plead for him for mercy. When the trouble of this world and fearfulness about having enough and doing enough and all the deceitfulness of wealth in this world and all that it has to offer chokes out your love and your desire for your Savior and for His word and His love and His will. When all these things threaten to choke you out, repent of your sin. Do it now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Do it today. Call on him while he is near. Seek him while he may be found. He speaks no empty words. We have to understand this, that apart from him, listening to our, to our own hearts and to the wisdom of this world and going on ignoring him, living apart from him, we know we will perish forever. He speaks no empty words. And as much as these words are frightening, as much as they are a threat, These words are also a promise from your God, a promise by which you receive the greatest blessing. See, the Bible says, speaks about you and me and our sin. And our God speaks about his love for us. Let the sinner come to me. Turn to the Lord, he says, and he will have mercy on him. Turn to your God, for he will freely pardon Mercy for sinners. That's that that compassionate love for those that are broken by their own sin and the sin of this world. Mercy for sinners. Free pardon. An exoneration of all our guilt 
and sin. These are the words that should really be empty. These are the words that shouldn't mean anything, that should be untrue, but they aren't. They are true. They are powerful, meaningful, and permanent for sinners. The Bible speaks about you. God says, I will forgive your wickedness and will remember your sin no more. Though your your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. You are washed clean, spotless in Christ. How amazing it is for you and for me that, that these are not empty words. The cross and the empty tomb of our Savior prove that these words are true, that they are powerful and that they carry on into eternity. So now, when your conscience and the devil accuse you of your wrongdoings from the past, when you have taken those sins already to your Savior, and the devil rears up, or something in this world causes you to be fearful of the guilt of your sin, you don't listen to your conscience any longer. You don't listen to the devil. You listen to the Word of God at your baptism. You were claimed by this Almighty Savior. You were washed clean in his blood that flowed, that gave power to the waters of your baptism. You were made to be a child of your Heavenly Father forever. And these are not empty words. When your heart tells you that that if you're going to be selfless and generous with your time and with your resources and with your pocketbook, that you're not going to have enough for the things that you really need, for the things that you really want to do, The Word of God says He will pour out His blessings upon you. You will never be in want. He is the one who provides all things in abundance for you. And His words are not empty. Never. When other people would rather discard you as worthless because of your record or because of some kind of lack of of usefulness to them. When, When people would abandon you in your time of need, the Word of God says, I can't forget about you. A mother would sooner forget about the baby that she's nursing than I would ever forget about you. I've engraved you on the palms of my hands. I've redeemed you purchased you and won you. You've been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ and these words are not empty. When earthly earthly sickness and even death comes as an unwelcome visitor to your home and to your family, you listen to the word of God, the one spoken by your Savior. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives believing in me, they will never die. This is his promise. And these aren't empty words. These are words that are proven to be powerful and true because he rose from the dead, tearing the jaws of death apart. When you you go through this life and at different times, you just feel lost and confused and you don't quite know what's coming around the next corner. And you're not a little bit afraid. You listen to the word of your Savior. He says, this this word of mine will be a lamp for your feet. It'll be the light you need for your path. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord puts their trust in him will never be put to shame. Whoever puts their trust in him will never perish but have everlasting life. These are no empty words. These words are powerful. These words have eternal meaning because Jesus Christ is literally the word made flesh to give them meaning and power. He set aside his power and his glory to be judged guilty of all of your sin, to give his life for your life, his death in place of your death, and his resurrection for your eternal comfort. He is the word who came like rain from heaven and accomplished what God desired, what God wanted. And what he wanted 
was for you to be forgiven forever, for you to be his child forever, for you to join him in everlasting life. So mercy is what you and I get. Pardon is ours, free, without cost. May his words of power continue to work in and through us as we now accomplish his will and achieve his desire that all may know this. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Now the peace of